Hello, everyone. Welcome to our webinar. I'm Alonzo Martinez, Associate Counsel Compliance at Higher Right, and this is Beyond the Basics. Let's talk adjudication. As a reminder, today's webinar is not intended as, nor should it be construed as legal or compliance advice, but uh, what we're going to do is offer you some great information for you to discuss with your legal counsel and stakeholders as you consider implementing an adjudication solution. Before we begin, I want to cover a few housekeeping items. During this webinar, please take the conversation to Twitter using the hashtag HireRightWebinar. In order to receive HRCI or SHRM credit, you must attend the full live session of this webinar. Credit information will be emailed a few days after today's webinar. We will not be providing copies of today's slides. However, we will send you an email shortly with a link to recording of this webinar session. If you're experiencing any audio or video issues, please refresh the browser window by clicking F5 on your keyboard or send us a message using the Q&A icon at the bottom of your screen. Doreen is producing today's webinar and will be monitoring the feed for any technical issues. After the presentation, we'd like getting your feedback. Please take our brief survey and let us know if the session was helpful. Our webinars are driven by your feedback, so please take 60 seconds out of your day and let us know what you think. And again, if you're experiencing any audio or video problems, just press F5 on your keyboard to refresh the presentation. So here is the rundown for today. I'm gonna open things up today with an overview of what from a compliance perspective you may wanna consider when implementing an assisted or facilitated adjudication process. I'm gonna focus on building your policy with respect to guidance from the EEOC and FTC cover adjudications for verifications like employment and education verifications, and also talk about creating an adjudication policy for criminal searches. I'll wrap my discussion with a quick discussion of what not to do. I'll take you through some lessons learned, so to speak, based on EOC enforcement, uh, enforcement actions or other cases filed against employers. So if you'll hang with me for around 20 minutes, I'll tee up a far more interesting discussion, and that's the actual product and solutions overview delivered by Allison Cooper, who's also joining me today. So Allison is gonna walk you through HireRight's adjudication solution, covering the benefits of both our self-administered and HireRight managed adjudication products. And then we're gonna hear from Lucas Rayberg, who's gonna share a customer success story with you, stemming from a customer who recently deployed our adjudication solution. We should have plenty of time for questions at the end of our presentation. So again, please use the Q&A icon at the bottom of your screen to ask a question. And again, if you're having any technical issues, please press F5 on your keyboard to refresh the presentation. And if that's not working, then use the Q&A icon to reach out to Doreen with your technical issue and she'll help you troubleshoot it. And as we switch speakers in this presentation, you may notice a brief pause in the audio or video as we hand over the reins to the presentation. Don't worry, that's normal. But again, F5 will refresh the screen and audio for you if the delay or other issues persist. So let's get into it. Starting with a discussion of compliance. I'm gonna start with an overview of compliance considerations behind creating and implementing an adjudication policy. In particular, one that's facilitated with the help of a consumer reporting agency like HireRight. So let's dive in. So that we're all on the same page, let's start with a definition of adjudication. As you can see on the screen, adjudication is the evaluation of all information included as part of a background investigation to assess if an individual is eligible for employment or assignment. So when we're talking about adjudication, we're talking about a holistic look at all of the data points you have available to you. This would include all of the information provided by the candidate, including any criminal disclosures, as well as all information searched and verified as part of the background report. You wanna create a policy and process that takes all of this information into consideration and does so in a way that is both consistent and not discriminatory. So let's unpack that a bit. My rule of thumb when questioning how to develop a policy or process is to fall back on the guidance of your regulators. So back in 2014, the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission or EEOC who, as you know, is responsible for enforcing federal anti-discrimination laws, joined forces with the Federal Trade Commission or FTC, who's responsible in part for enforcing consumer protection laws like the FCRA or Fair Credit Reporting Act. 
So the EEOC and FTC issued a joint publication called Background Checks, What Employers Need to Know. And they provided really good actionable guidance in a short, easy to read document. And if we look at that guidance, there are two simple points that we can take away when building an adjudication program. The first is to treat everyone equally, and the second is to comply with all applicable laws. So when we talk about treating everyone equally, we're looking at avoiding claims of discrimination based on race, color, national origin, sex, or religion, disability, um, genetic information, including medical history, and age, specifically those who are 40 or older. And with respect to disparate treatment, the EEOC has found that arrests and incarceration rates are two to three times higher for African-American and Hispanic men. Therefore, criminal history hiring policies can have a disparate impact on these socioeconomic groups. So we'll talk about policy considerations and actionable information to help promote consistent decision making and thwart disparate impact shortly. Remember that the Fair Credit Reporting Act or FCRA applies not only to credit checks, but to all types of background data obtained from a consumer reporting agency or background check vendor like HireRight. And in order to comply with the FCRA, you need to make sure that you're providing appropriate disclosures to your candidates or employees before requesting a background check from HireRight and to certify that you're requesting a background check for employment permissible purposes, and that you have or will comply with all applicable laws, including the pre-adverse and adverse action process, which provides a candidate or employee with an opportunity to dispute the accuracy or completeness of the background check with higher right in the event that you may adversely affect their employment. So knowing that the foundation of our adjudication policy needs to be consistent but not discriminatory and compliant with all applicable laws, where do we start? Well, a good place to start is to consider what outcomes consistently meet your company's hiring criteria. These positive outcomes should be defined as part of your background check program. And if you use higher rights adjudication solutions, then backgrounds that meet your defined criteria can be removed out of your review queue. Now, when addressing information either disclosed by the candidate or returned on the background report that may cause you to not hire that candidate or other potentially adverse outcomes, this is where you wanna be consistent in your flagging of these reports by role. And each employer or organization will be different in what they consider potentially adverse as every organization has a different risk tolerance. You're gonna to hear me say that a few times today. So you'll wanna conduct an individualized assessment for any potentially adverse information both by search or verification, and then holistically overall with respect to all background check data. So from a higher right solutions perspective, as Allison's gonna tell you shortly, when implementing an adjudication program with us, you're gonna define those scenarios that meet your company's hiring criteria and those scenarios where we are to flag the reports as requiring your review and attention. I think it's important to note that HireRight will not adjudicate a report to does not meet on your behalf, as you as the employer are in the best position to determine if an individual does or does not meet your company's hiring criteria and is or is not a fit for your organization. But what we will do is flag those fringe cases for you and clear the ones that clearly meet your organization's hiring policy. Lucas is gonna tell you a little bit more about the time and labor savings offered by implementing an adjudication program. So let's put this into practice. Starting with verifications. And when we're talking about verifications, we're talking about education verification, verifications of past employments, uh, professional license or uh, certification verifications. So here's an example of what you might wanna consider when assessing verifications. And again, this is just an example. It's not necessarily indicative of what is right for your company. Let's, let's start by talking about positive outcomes. So a positive outcome doesn't necessarily mean that there are no discrepancies at all. Again, this is about defining your organization's risk tolerance. So for example, a date discrepancy in a degree verification of a few months, that could be perfectly acceptable. The same is true for differences in word choice. These semantic differences may not necessarily mean that the candidate is intentionally trying to mislead you but major discrepancies in dates or titles, whether or not an individual actually earned a degree or license, those are typically indicative of a potentially adverse outcome. So how do you manage a potentially adverse outcome? 
how do you manage a significant discrepancy? Well, again, this is where you're going to want to build your policy so that you're consistent in flagging. And then to the extent that there is a discrepancy that causes you concern, you should qualify the extent to which it is a problem for your organization. So for example, is it reasonably likely based on the information you have that your candidate was trying to be deceptive? And to what degree could that misinformation affect the candidate or worker's ability to do their job at your company? That is your individualized assessment. And that assessment should be documented for every review of every background check that you request where any discrepancies are identified. So let's shift gears and talk about adjudication of criminal history. Looking back at the EEOC, the EEOC's 2012 guidance to employers on the use of arresting conviction history, it tells us that employers shouldn't firstly affect an individual's employment based on a record of arrest, seeing as many arrests don't result in criminal charges or convictions. The EEOC also tells us that you shouldn't automatically disqualify an individual from hire. Instead, you should have a targeted screening policy that's job-related and consistent with business necessity. So with respect to adjudication policy, again, this means defining your adjudication practices holistically and consistently with respect to positive or clear results and then conducting individualized assessments based on any discrepancies as defined by your organization's risk tolerance. And as part of higher rights adjudication services, you'll let us know exactly what meets your company's hiring criteria so that we can filter out those reports for you. And you'll let us know what criteria is potentially adverse so that we can flag those for you for your review. So what is an individualized assessment? Well, you can see the basic elements on your screen. And again, this comes from the EEOC's guidance on consideration of arresting conviction records in employment decisions. Really great document. So an individualized assessment is intended to provide notice to the candidate that a criminal record was identified, give the candidate an opportunity to explain the circumstances surrounding their criminal conduct and any mitigating information, and evaluate the totality of facts and circumstances behind that criminal conviction. A couple of things that are often missed when conducting an individualized assessment are the fourth bullet point on the left-hand side of your screen, that the candidate has held similar work in the past, and the third bullet point on the right-hand side of the screen, that employment references for a candidate are positive. So when you're looking at criminal history, you should do so in consideration of these factors. And if the conviction is old, the candidate has held a similar job, or the candidate has good references, then you're probably not justified in denying that candidate a position. And as always, my suggestion is to make sure that you have a documented process to conduct this individualized assessment and keep it with the candidate's screening file. So from a Higher Right Solutions perspective, Higher Right offers Compliance Workbench as a free, no-cost option to help you manage your individualized assessments. So let us know as part of the survey if you'd like to know more about Compliance Workbench, and we'll get you that info. And now a quick reminder to follow the pre-adverse process and adverse action process as applicable for these reports. So let's say that you're considering denying someone a position with your company based in whole or in part on their background report and associated data. Here's where the pre-adverse process comes into play. So that means that maybe you don't like their criminal history that's reported, or let's say they don't have the appropriate qualifications to work for you. What do you do? Well, before you communicate anything to the candidate, you must provide them with a pre-adverse action notice that includes a copy of their background report. This allows the individual a reasonable amount of time to review the report and to contact Higher Right to dispute any information in the report that the applicant believes is inaccurate or incomplete. So let's say that you've decided to deny someone employment after you've given them an opportunity to dispute and explain themselves. We're at the adverse action process. So on the right-hand side of the screen, you'll see the four elements that need to be included in the adverse action, and that's a description of the adverse action, the contact info for Higher Right, a statement that Higher Right didn't make the decision not to bring the candidate on board, and a candidate's notice of rights under the FCRA or Fair Credit Reporting Act to obtain a free copy of their background report. So again, looking at this from a Higher Right perspective, we offer several options to help you manage your pre-adverse and adverse action responsibilities you can send the pre-adverse and adverse action letters outside of our system, or you can use the letters function within Screening Manager. If you're 
unfamiliar with this, once you're looking at a candidate's report in Screening Manager, you can click on Letters, which is on the top-hand menu, and send them a copy of their pre-adverse action or adverse action letter from within the system. That includes a copy of the report, their summary of rights under the FCRA, as well as certain other state or local notices. Additionally, we offer solutions where we can mail the letters to your candidates on your behalf as part of the self-managed or higher right facilitated adjudication solutions. Again, um, Allison will talk about this a little bit more uh, in, the, in the next segment, but if you're making the higher or no higher decision, we can send out those letters on your behalf. So let us know in the survey if you'd like more information about our pre-adverse or adverse action letter solutions. Now, I would be remiss if I didn't point out a few additional considerations that you'll want to take into account as you build out your adjudication program. Remember that ban the box jurisdictions delay your ability to inquire into an individual's criminal history. So that's generally until after a conditional offer of employment has been extended to the candidate. And some ban the box jurisdictions like those shown on the screen have additional compliance requirements, whether they be identifying the specific criminal conduct that may disqualify the individual from hire or providing the candidate with a copy of an individualized assessment or those that have special notice requirements. So when you build an adjudication policy, you're gonna to wanna to consider these items as part of your process. The good news is that if you use Higher Rights Compliant Workbench Solution in collaboration with our adjudication services, these reports that are subject to special handling can be identified for your review. And then there are those jurisdictions that restrict an employer's ability to inquire into a candidate's credit history. So you'll see those on the right-hand side of the screen. If you request credit reports as part of your employment process, you'll first wanna make sure that you're eligible to conduct a credit check under that state's law. And if so, that you provided the candidate with all required special notices and adhere to any special requirements as part of the pre-adverse or adverse action process. Again, as part of a managed adjudication process, you'll likely want to direct this um, to flag these reports for you for your review. And I'm gonna quickly wrap with the few lessons learned, ripped from the headlines, if you will, and I'll, I'll make this brief. Let's start with EEOC actions. Over the last five years or so, there have been numerous actions claiming discrimination, specifically concerning criminal record screening policies with settlement decrees averaging millions of dollars. These actions span the gamut of industries from retail to manufacturing throughout these actions, and that is that an employer um, holistically disqualifies a certain base of candidates or certain set of candidates based on their criminal screening policies. That's what you want to avoid with a good, well-reasoned adjudication process. There are also no shortage of lawsuits claiming FCRA violations. These are often technical violations like disclosure and authorizations not being standalone documents, but there are also procedural violations like communicating an adverse employment decision to a candidate before that candidate has had an opportunity to review their background check and file a dispute with a consumer reporting agency. The end result of all of these actions are significant, both in terms of monetary costs to the employer in defending the settlement or going through the suit altogether, but also in terms of reputation loss or effect to the employer's brand image. It's just bad business. So remember, it's important to treat everyone equally and be consistent in your approach to adjudication and to comply with all applicable laws. And higher rights adjudication services can put you right where you should be. That's giving you the ability to create holistic, positive adjudications that meet your company standards, permit higher right to knock those reports out that unequivocally meet your company's hiring standards, and then gives you the ability to focus on individualized assessments for those fringe cases while you review potentially adverse information that's relevant to the different roles that you hire for within your company. So, Thanks for hanging with me through this compliance discussion. And if you have any questions for me, just use the Q&A icon and get those uh, answered at the end of the presentation. So now I'm going to hand it over to Allison, who's going to walk you through a much more exciting topic, and that's a review of higher rights adjudication services. Allison? Thanks, Alonzo. This is Allison Cooper, product manager here at Higher Right and I will be presenting an overview and demo of our adjudication services. So just to reiterate, adjudication is the process of reviewing a background report holistically 
against your guidelines and making a hiring decision. All companies go through this review process when screening a candidate for a position. We're gonna walk through how the Hire Right solution can help streamline that process and speed up the time to hire. An account is set up with packages that contain various products that are ordered depending on the position being filled. That could range from court records to drug testing to employment or education verification to name a few. When a background report is submitted, those products in the package are ordered and fulfilled. Based on those completed product results, an adjudication outcome or status is determined. Adjudication is a package level setting, which means your guidelines are configured to a specific package or packages that you would order. Multiple guideline sets can be configured for a single account, which allows the flexibility to have different criteria for different job types. We see this frequently for driver versus non-driver positions and packages. Adjudication guidelines are online, version controlled and accessible, which allows for consistent and documented decision-making. You have visibility to the specific guideline set and version number that was applied to each background report. Higher Right has standard adjudication statuses, but customized statuses can easily be configured. We have two different adjudication product offerings. One that is solely managed by you, called self-adjudication, and the other which is managed by both Higher Right and you as the customer, called managed adjudication. The goal is the same though, to help speed up the time to hire, promote consistency, and provide flexibility and visibility. Self-adjudication is a fully automated solution with an instantaneous turnaround time once all products in the background report have completed. Currently, the system is looking at what we call the fulfillment or the closing status for each product ordered. If those results are clear and no discrepancies were found, a status of meets company standards will be automatically applied to that report. On average, we see about 78 to 80% of reports set to meets company standards, although this number can fluctuate based on the industry or the products ordered in the package. If a discrepancy is found, such as a court record, the report will be flagged for your review and assessment. We also have a standard status of canceled, which is primarily used for candidates that are no longer under consideration where a meets or a does not meet status is not applicable. With managed adjudication, this is managed by both higher rate and you as the customer. If the results are clear and no discrepancies were found, a status of meets company standards will be automatically applied to your report. The difference here with self-adjudication is that reports with discrepancies are first manually reviewed by the higher right adjudication team in accordance with your predefined guidelines. An adjudication status will be set and the specific reason for that result will be visible to you. This ultimately reduces the number of results that may require your review. With this product offering, the turnaround time is approximately four business hours. With managed adjudication, we see roughly 50% of reports that are automatically adjudicated to meets company standards right off the bat. That remaining 50% on average are routed to the higher right adjudication team for review and analysis. So now I'm gonna walk you through a demo of our screening manager customer portal. So if using our adjudication services, you would see both the pending adjudication and the completed tab. So adjudication is permission driven, so you can control which users can view 
and or change adjudication results. We have configurable notifications that are generated off the higher right adjudication status so you can configure those to be sent to the appropriate people in your organization. Let's start by reviewing the self adjudication workflow. So here I am on the completed tab and I'm gonna first look at this order with self adjudication. So as mentioned, if a report is submitted and no discrepancies are found, that report would automatically be adjudicated by higher right to a meets company standard status and route directly to this completed tab. So from this view on the report summary, you can see a line item for all the products that were included in this particular package that was ordered and what the adjudication result or outcome was for each of those products or services. So for this one, there were no discrepancies found on this report. So this report was automatically adjudicated to meets company standards. So this is what we call the overall report level adjudication. And then each product itself has an, a corresponding adjudication status. So you can see again on this particular example that everything came back clear with no discrepancies and this report was adjudicated to meets. So if I go to the history tab, it shows a chronological summary of the various activities for a particular report. So again, you can see this report was submitted. This was adjudicated by higher right to a status of meets company standards. So again, this completed tab is where orders will route if they are set to what we call a final adjudication status, either by higher right or by you as the customer. Okay, so let's go to the pending adjudication tab. I wanna show you what an order with self adjudication looks like that has a discrepancy found by higher right. So again, the pending adjudication tab is where orders or reports will route if the adjudication status is what we call an interim status, like a client review required, meaning this report requires your review. So again, this is one with self adjudication so you can see here in this fulfillment result column, there was a court record found. So the system automatically is looking at the fulfillment result for the products that were in the package ordered and applying a status. So in this case, there was a discrepancy found. The system automatically applied a client review required status to this order. So you have two choices here. Since this is client review required, that means that you need to review as the customer and make a final adjudication decision. So you have two options. You can adjudicate at what we call the overall report level. You click this adjudication pencil and you're presented with a split screen here. So the top portion of this report is in this top screen and the bottom is simply your adjudication statuses in this drop down here. So you have the option what we call at the report level to look at everything in the background report and make a single status decision here. So I'm going to X out of this because I want to show you what the actual product level adjudication outcome looks like. So I'm going to click this pencil for court record found because I know that there was a discrepancy here. So again, you could see it shows criminal felony misdemeanor court record found client review required. I'm going to scroll down and I can see that there was a DUI misdemeanor reported. So I can go over to this drop down here, select the arrow, and then at this point I can change the adjudication status. So let's just say this is a non-driving position. So maybe this particular case is not applicable for this position. So I'm gonna say that this meets standards because maybe this is not a driver so this is okay according to our company's guidelines. So I'm gonna say meets company standards and I'm gonna click submit. I'm gonna get prompted with a confirmation. So if I click cancel, it basically backs out and returns to the previous screen. I can click okay. And it's gonna update the overall adjudication status here to meets company standards. So this order will now move to the completed tab.
since that's now considered what we call a final adjudication status. So let me X out of these. So now let's go to the completed tab again. So you can see that last order that I just updated is this top one here. And so what I wanna do now is show you a managed adjudication order. So this particular report has managed adjudication. It was set to meet company standards by higher right. So with managed adjudication, the typical process here is if you choose this adjudication option, you provide your in-depth specific adjudication guidelines to higher right and our operations team is using them on your behalf when doing that initial review for anything that comes back with any type of discrepancy on the report. So I can tell right off the bat that there was some type of a discrepancy as there's two products listed here that are showing up in red, the court record and the employment report. So if I wanna go click and find kind of an easy way to look at everything and just see which guidelines were applied to this particular order, I can click on report details and scroll down and you can see the different adjudication guidelines that were applied for each specific product. So in this case, I'm really more concerned with the discrepancies. So how was Higher Right able to say that this candidate met my standards? So I'm gonna scroll down, I'm gonna look at the employment. It was closed as unable to verify. But based on the notes here, I can see that Higher Right set this to a meets company standards because of this specific guideline of mine as the customer. Unable to verify, but the applicant or candidate was able to provide documentation which could have included a W-2, 1099, pay stub, or other acceptable documentation. So that's one less thing that you as the customer would have to potentially review. So now I'm gonna continue scrolling down to show you what the court records looks like. So again, Higher Right set this, to, this report to meets company standards. And again, this is the managed adjudication workflow. So I can see that a misdemeanor court record was reported that was ultimately dismissed and the adjudication guideline that was applied to this specific report is listed here. So it shows meets company standards and the reason was a dismissal type disposition because based on my guidelines, that particular guideline results in a meets company standards. So again, higher right set this report to a meets company standards based on your guidelines that you've provided to us. And you can see on the report here, just again, the chronological summary and history shows that this report was adjudicated by higher right to a meets company standards and the specific guideline reason is listed in this result reason section. Okay, so let's go back to the pending adjudication tab and I wanna walk through a report that was set by higher right to client review required. So what the system does is the system will roll up the most derogatory status to what we call the report level. So in this case, the sex offender registry search was a meet, but because the court record had a client review required result, the overall adjudication status for this particular candidate is client review required. So again, we know that we have the split screen here where I can make the adjudication decision at what we call again, the report level or the specific product level. So since there's one product here with a discrepancy, I'm gonna click this pencil here, and I can see that higher right set this report to client review required based on my rule or guideline that there was a misdemeanor DUI conviction within the past two years found for this candidate. So again, with managed adjudication, if there were no discrepancies, higher right would set that report automatically to a meets company standards. If there is a discrepancy, that report is first reviewed by our higher right adjudication team in accordance with your guidelines, and then an adjudication status is then set. So this still requires your review, but you're not having to look through the entire report to try to decipher why this was flagged. We're telling you this was flagged because of your guideline that a misdemeanor DUI within the past two years was found. So what the system does here by default is it will display the guidelines that were applied to this particular service. 
but I can also click display all guidelines to see what other guidelines do I have for criminal records. So you can see here, guidelines can really be as, as simple as any felony conviction is a needs HR review, which is a custom adjudication status that we have configured, or they can be more in depth and detailed like some of these others listed here. But the good thing here again is to facilitate consistency and have these adjudication guidelines online and loaded into the system so that when you're adjudicating for this particular package, you have your guidelines in front of you so you're making consistent decisions. So I'm gonna scroll up and let's walk through the process of, you know, I'm gonna say, you know what, I think I need to take a further look at this candidate for this particular record that was returned. I'm gonna set this to what we call pending potential conflict. I'm gonna scroll down, I'm gonna click submit. I get my confirmation again, I'm gonna click okay. So as you can see, uh, this particular account is set up to automatically trigger the pre-adverse action letter based on that pending potential conflict status. So I'm gonna click acknowledge and proceed. And again, that's gonna update to pending potential conflict. Maybe I needed more time to review this with my HR team, maybe my legal team. So let's pretend that I've reviewed and I've determined that this particular candidate does not meet our standards. So I'm gonna come back in here and I'm gonna change this to a does not meet, which is the first one here. I'm gonna click submit. Again, you get the confirmation. You can click cancel and back out or click okay to proceed. So what you can see here is that based on the dates listed, the system will calculate, track, and ensure that a minimum of seven business days have passed before triggering that adverse action letter. So I'm gonna click acknowledge and proceed. You can see the adjudication is now updated to a does not meet company standards. I'm gonna go back here. I'm gonna click refresh and you'll see that this order will disappear and it should move to the completed tab because we've moved that to a does not meet, which is a final adjudication status. Click refresh. You can see that order has disappeared. Move to the completed tab. And you can see it's listed here. The status is does not meet company standards. So you can go to history and scroll down. And you can see here that the adjudication status was changed by, by me here to pending potential conflict. And then ultimately to the does not meet company standards. So one other thing I wanted to mention was in terms of the adjudication guidelines. So the adjudication guidelines, as I said, are a package level setting. So we have visibility right here for this particular report that shows which adjudication guidelines were applied. So one thing is you typically see two guideline sets. One would be the auto library, which houses, it's basically a rules engine that houses all of our products and specific closing statuses and different outcomes. And then we also have the guideline set, which is typically your set of guidelines, or it could just be a set of statuses. So one thing that's um, really accessible here, this is permission based, but you do have access to the adjudication guidelines that are active or inactive for your account. So there's an active and an inactive tab here. So you can see which guideline sets basically that are currently active, what the version number is and what date they were activated. This reference code corresponds to that previous screen that I just showed you where you could see the guideline set that was applied to a specific order. So basically, if, if guideline changes are requested, HireRight makes those changes, and then a new set of guidelines are activated or a new version is activated, that previous version is rendered inactive, and then it would move to this inactive tab. So thank you so much for your time. This again was a demo of our adjudication product offerings. I will be passing it over to Lucas who will be sharing a customer success story. Thank you. My name is Lucas Rayberg and I am a key account manager here at HireRight dedicated to the healthcare vertical. Select Rehabilitation is a client of mine and they agreed to participate in this case study. 
I have had the pleasure of managing this account for the last several years. And in case you're not familiar with their organization, Select Rehab is headquartered out of uh, Glenview, Illinois, and they provide comprehensive therapy services with qualified licensed professionals in a variety of clinical settings, such as skilled nursing facilities, uh, continuing care retirement communities, assisted living facilities, independent living facilities, home health, and even schools. Their therapeutic programs are focused on delivering the highest care to their patients in order to achieve and maintain the highest quality of life. Um, they currently serve patients in almost all 50 states and are constantly growing. They have owners that really take care of their employees and have created a culture of excellence as it relates to not only patient care, but employee care as well. Um, and from a business perspective, they, they really have a lean, centralized HR business model that is incredibly efficient by leveraging technology to really streamline every process, both internally and externally. Um, you, you know, working with Select Rehab, the challenge that we had with our process was really adjudication. So before adding the managed adjudication to their process, their reports were getting delayed for a review, and this added on average four plus days to their overall process. This, you know, in turn resulted in significant increases to their overall time to hire, which ultimately impacted their ability to hire critical staff um, and, you know, overall serve their patients, right? So uh, the solution was to move over to our managed adjudication through services, which enables Select Rehab to streamline this part of their process through customized guidelines tailored to their specific needs in order to eliminate unnecessary review and approvals from their top level leadership. So we reviewed three main benefits of this solution. Uh, the first is how much time was saved for the overall background report. We calculated uh, this to be a time savings on average of 24%. This again was for the entire background report. So what this is measuring is from the time we received consent from the candidate uh, and begin processing the background to the time of final adjudication is set. Uh, so that, that whole time from the consent to when the final adjudication is set, we were able to reduce that by 24% on average, which is uh, substantial. Uh, the second metric we wanted to review is the improvement in the adjudication time. Here we saw roughly a 31% improvement specifically in the adjudication time. So a reduction in, in the time a request sits in the pending adjudication status by 31%. Uh, lastly, we measured the, you know, how many reports are, are set to pending overall. So here we saw a reduction in reports that are set to pending from 22% uh, to 15%. So, so this in turn means that the client no longer has to touch those 7% uh, as a result. So in conclusion, uh, the results of this solution overall has helped Select Rehab eliminate redundancies in their program and, and really streamline their overall adjudication process, which allows their team to focus instead on hiring and retaining that top talent. Thank you very much. All right, uh, at this point, we'd like to open it up for questions. So you can ask a question by clicking on the Q&A icon at the bottom of your screen. I'm happy to field any compliance questions. Um, Allison can help you with product questions and Lucas is here to address any client experience questions. So give me just one second as we start to look through some of these questions and we'll start to get to them for you. Looks like we have several questions coming in. So thank you so much for the audience engagement. This really helps us to make uh, the presentation far more enjoyable for us at the Higher Right team. And, and we hope that you find some of this information helpful. So I'm going to start with a compliance question. Um, and then I'll hand it over to Allison in a second for a product question. But one of the questions that we have from a compliance perspective is, is how is a consumer reporting agency defined? Um, if a third party orders background reports from higher right, they're fulfilled by higher right and then passed over to the client, how does that work? Um, so if that third party that is ordering the reports from higher right is uh, effectively your outsourced HR provider, then they are not a consumer reporting agency. Um, but to the extent that the 
the reports are being used by you and you are making um, the employment decision, um, then remember that you may have the compliance responsibilities uh, that are that are in tow there. So that means that it would be incumbent on you to ensure that you're sending out a lawful disclosure and getting the candidate's authorization. Um, and it would also be incumbent on you as the employer to send out the pre-adverse and adverse action um, as, as applicable. Again, it just depends on how you set up that relationship with the outsourced HR organization. Allison, a few questions um, have come through regarding clients wanting copies of their guidelines. I know you walked that, us through that um, in, the, in the system. Can you just kind of walk us through that again at a high level where clients can find a copy of their guidelines? Sure. Um, so yes, it, it is permission-based, but in the screening manager portal um, on the left navigation menu, um, there is a section there of adjudication guidelines. Um, so you should be able to see that. Again, it is permission-driven, so if that option is not there and visible, um, then I suggest reaching out to your higher rate representative, and we can get you a copy of your guidelines and then also double-check on those permissions. Thanks, Allison. Another question for you. Uh, do both the self-adjudication product and manage adjudication products include higher right sending out the pre-adverse and adverse action letters? So it's not automatically included, but that is an account setting that can be configured with either of those adjudication offerings. And can you walk us quickly through the differences between the um, self-managed pre-adverse adverse letter process versus the higher right facilitated process? So with the, um, the self-managed process, um, there is an option within the screening manager uh, portal to basically manually um, send those letters yourself or with the automated, uh, it's an account setting here at higher right, um, but we can generate those statuses automatically off of an adjudication status. So the example that I went through, the pre-adverse letter was automatically triggered off of that adjudication status of pending potential conflict. And then as you saw, um, you know, after that review was done and assessment was done, and when I changed that adjudication status to does not meet, the system automatically tracks um, to ensure a minimum of seven business days have elapsed before automatically sending out that adverse letter. Thanks, Allison. I'm gonna take a compliance question. Um, staying in the pre-adverse action arena, uh, how long do you have to wait between a pre-adverse action letter and a post-adverse action letter or action? Um, so the answer is it depends. Uh, and unfortunately, the FCRA itself does not define how long is a reasonable amount of time between the pre-adverse and adverse action letter. The Federal Trade Commission or FTC did issue an advisory opinion. So again, this is their opinion. And that advisory opinion says that five business days is a reasonable amount of time between the pre-adverse and adverse action letter. If you use higher rights, manage adverse action process. This is where we're sending out the letters on your behalf. Our minimum system standard is seven days, and that seven days accounts for weekends as well as any holidays to make sure we're at least meeting that five-day standard. With that said, it's never quite that easy, is it? Um, so we talked about ban the box jurisdictions. Um, I should mention that there are several jurisdictions that require at least seven days between the pre-adverse and adverse action notice, um, San Francisco, Chicago, and uh, the Maryland um, ban the box jurisdictions all require at least seven days. And then there is Philadelphia which is the big outlier. Philadelphia requires 10 days between the pre-adverse and adverse action notice. So again, if you use higher rights managed adverse action process, you'll probably wanna set up a separate account for the purposes of screening Philadelphia residents and then set an adverse setting for 10 days between the pre-adverse and adverse action process. All right, let's get back over to the questions. And again, thank you for sending in these questions. I'm getting a lot of great audience feedback. Lucas, let's let's toss one over to you. So um, does Higher Right provide specific recommendations to employers on acceptable standard criteria based on their expertise and screening as a business? Thanks, Alonzo. So Higher Right does not provide recommendations since the guidelines should represent your business and hiring criteria. However, we do provide a sample template of guidelines to help start that process. 
Thanks, Lucas. And I can tell you also that if you are ever uh, fortunate enough to join one of our user groups, um, those user groups are a fantastic opportunity to benchmark with other clients in your industry um, and ask what, what they're doing with respect to their uh, the management of their, their screening programs. Um, you, you always want to do what your fellow colleagues in the industry are doing. Um, Allison, how about um, pending search results? So can an employer ever adjudicate a pending search result for an employment report? Um, so this is where an employer may receive something that causes them to uh, make a decision before higher right receives um, a, a final result on that candidate. Okay, so yeah, this, this sounds like it might be more of a uh, question in terms of the specific verification client guidelines, and there may be an opportunity there to make some updates. So I would suggest on that reaching out to your higher right representative or account manager, just to kind of talk through that process in more detail, just to see if there's anything that can be changed in terms of how the verifications team would be looking at any documentation and closing out those services. Thanks, Allison. Uh, does here's a compliance question. Um, does higher right provide a summary of specific state requirements? So we have a resource library. If you go to the higher right webpage, you can find the higher right resource library, or you can do a web search for higher right resource library. And within the resource library, we have um, a ban the box summary, we have a pay equity summary, we have a use of credit summary, marijuana summary whole bunch of different summaries that we put together that summarize state or local laws and also provide you with um, some, some feedback as to how you may want to configure your adjudication programs or screening programs based on those laws. Um, I'll also quickly add that our compliance workbench solution that I told you about uh, during my presentation, it actually has that ban the box summary baked into it. So for instance, um, if a report is subject to special handling because it is in a ban the box jurisdiction, you'll be notified that it's subject to special handling. You'll also be provided with a summary of the specific law that you need to take into account when deciding how to handle that particular jurisdiction. So for instance, if it requires an individual individualized assessment, you'll know that it requires an individualized assessment and you'll be uh, given access to, to templates um, that you can use to complete your pre-adverse and adverse action notices um, that would include that individualized assessment. So again, Compliance Workbench is a free, no cost option for you, uh, something that you may want to ask about as part of the survey. Uh, another compliance question, which uh, jurisdictions require seven days between the pre-adverse and adverse action notice? Um, so again, I'll just go through this quickly. That's San Francisco, Chicago, Montgomery County, Maryland, Prince George's County, Maryland, um, and uh, any of the Maryland-specific ban-the-box jurisdictions. Um, again, Philadelphia requiring 10 between that. And that's also referenced in our ban-the-box summary that's available in the Higher Right Resource Library. Um, another, another question about the individualized assessment process, um, what does this mean? Um, do you have to provide a copy of the individualized assessment to the candidate if it's completed? So in general, my recommendation, and, and this is also the EEOC's recommendation, is anytime there is a discrepancy in an individual's background that may cause you to not hire them, the EEOC recommends that you conduct an individualized assessment. And again, that individualized assessment basically is a, a test um, that assesses the individual's criminal conduct or other potentially adverse conduct um, in relation to the job that they're applying for. And if there is a rational relationship um, that causes uh, an issue for your company, whether it be you know potential um, issue with respect to your company's assets or brand, whatever it may be, um, then you, know, you can justify denying that individual employment. However, if there's no rational relationship and if the individual has performed a similar job in the past and has good references, then you're probably not justified in uh, not hiring that individual. In most jurisdictions, you don't need to provide a copy with a, a copy of that individualized assessment to the candidate. However, there are some jurisdictions where you do. Um, again, if you want more information on those jurisdictions where you do need to send a copy of the individualized assessment to the candidate, um, then take a look at our Ban the Box resource within the High Right Resource Library. 
All right. Um, a question um, regarding the pre-adverse action period, can we change the five-day period? So again, if you're using high rights managed service, the minimum period is seven days. You can make it longer, but you cannot make it shorter than seven days. Um, all right, as we're getting down into the last five minutes or so of our presentation, Allison, are there any questions that you've seen come in that you want to key in on? Um, I don't think so. I, I saw quite a few, um, but I think Lucas covered it um, just in terms of, you know, that, that we don't provide, um, you know, specific guidance on, on guidelines and what your criteria should be. But we do have, like Lucas said, a sample adjudication template that can be provided. Um, just scrolling through here. Yes. And Lucas, you want to... Lucas, do you want to tell us a little bit about your experience maybe in walking uh, Select Rehab through that uh, through that setup process for their um, adjudication program? Sure, yeah. So I, I would say just overall, the best programs really evolve over time. And, you know, it's not something that for the most part you're going to be able to have a, you know, one-stop shop program once you set it up. It's something that you have to keep a pulse on. Uh, you know, what you continue to see as client review required and then adjust to further perfect that. As an example, you know, if you're seeing, uh, you know, criminal records such as traffic violations or even DUIs, if it's a non-driving position, maybe that's a scenario where you want that to be defaulted to a meets company standards. In, in situations like that where you can you know, adjust your sensitivity, that's really where you have the greatest opportunity to add in um, uh, that automation, which will improve the overall program. So I would say, you know, it, it's something that you just continue to have to work through with your higher right rep on uh, to continue to further drive improvements on that. Thanks, Lucas, and, and I, whole, I wholeheartedly agree. I, I think that the the real advantage here is not just clicking out the uh, kicking out those those background reports that are completely clear without discrepancies, but it's finding that tolerance for your organization where there are minor discrepancies that can still meet your criteria. And Allison, I'm sorry, I interrupted you. Oh no, that's okay. I was just going to say, and another feature that we have, um, you know, is just looking at some reporting met metrics and you can really kind of hone in on those reports that maybe you know higher right set to client review required on your behalf and you can really drill down into you know your specific rate of pending results and is it a specific guideline or product that maybe you can see causes you know the vast majority of those that you're having to look at and like lucas said those guidelines can evolve over time because if you see that you know there's some trends there where you know 90 percent of the time when a specific guideline is set by higher rate to client review required and then you're ultimately changing that to meets that maybe there's an opportunity to change your guidelines just to allow for yeah that quicker turnaround time and helping with that you know just speeding up that time to hire Absolutely. Well, it looks like we're getting down to our last minute or so of today's presentation. So again, I uh, thank you everybody for your engagement today. And if we didn't get to your question today, we'll follow up with you after this webinar. We'll also send you a link to a recording of today's webinar session and any details concerning HRCI or SHRM credit in uh, just a few days. Until then, um, as always, please take our survey, take 60 seconds out of, our, out of your day, complete today's short survey, and, and we, we really want to create content that, that you find helpful. Um, so in particular, let us know if you'd like any information on our adjudication solutions, um, our managed pre-adverse or adverse action solution, compliance workbench, which again can help you with ban the box compliance, or any of our other products or services. So on behalf of the team at HighRight, thanks again for your time today. We appreciate it.